those commit those standing committees okay now if you were to add up those committees there would be more in the house than in the senate okay and how do you get on a committee signed by, sign by the leadership okay now that means you've got to be in good with your leadership now today guys as we are speaking republican members of the house are meeting to discuss the rules of the House and talking about when they're going to have leadership elections. Okay, uh, Kevin McCarthy of California is the likely Speaker of the House. Now, as far as the House goes, as far as those 435 seats from this last election, right now we are at 217 for the Republican. How many do you need? Okay, so it's looking more and more like the Republicans will get to 218 or 219, slight chance of 220, okay? So McCarthy wants to be the speaker. He is being challenged by a representative named, named Andy Biggs. Andy Biggs is part of what's called the Freedom Caucus. Now within these bodies of the House Democrats and House Senate, you have these different caucuses, okay? so. Uh, you have the um, the African American Caucus, Freedom Caucus, the Hispanic Caucus, and so forth. Okay, uh, the Freedom Caucus is really conservative people in the House. Okay, and they have a large number. They want a bigger seat at the table. So Biggs is challenging McConnell for the Speaker of the House position. Mitch McConnell will be challenged for the Senate minority spot, most likely by a guy named Steve Scalise. McConnell's likely to win, okay, and so is McCarthy for the Speaker, all right? But they are having these arguments right now as we speak. They're meeting today, okay? Nancy Pelosi changed the rules of the House. She's able to do that as Speaker. There are certain things that they want repealed. If you don't know this, guys, members of Congress since COVID and still today have been able to vote in abstention. What does that mean? They don't have to be there. For 200 plus years of Congress, in order to vote, you had to be present to vote. Nancy Pelosi changed that rule and she hasn't changed it back, okay? There are other rules that she changed that uh, Republicans are going to reverse, right? I heard one, one representative, Matt Gatz of Florida, say this. He said, I remember when I was a freshman member of the House and I had to vote on a bill on taxes, but in the same bill was whether to fund the Saudis in the Civil War in Yemen. And he's like, I shouldn't have to choose between those two things. Okay, we need to like separate this legislation and be able to vote on things that are important to us. Okay, and vote against things that are important to us. Not put them all together like that. Okay, so these are discussions that are being had. Now, the committee system is very important to how the, the system works. Okay, the House has more of these standing committees, as you can see on page uh, 77. The House has 22. These are standing committees. Now, these House standing committees are going to have a certain number of people on them. Okay? Now, there's 435 members of the House. So, on these 22 committees, you will have between 11 and 57 members. On these committees. 
Some of the committees are really popular, so you'll have more members. Okay, some are not popular. You may only have 11. Since there's 22 committees and you have 435 people, members do not generally have to serve on multiple, multiple committees. Ron Estes just serves on the House Ways and Means Committee. Okay, in the Senate, where there's only 100 senators, okay, they have fewer committees. Senate has 16 standing committees. They will have membership. 11 and 29 members. Again, some of these committees are more popular than others. And if you look at the bottom of page 77, Jerry Moran um, is on the Committee of Agriculture, Nutrition, Forestry, Energy, Natural Resources, Health and Education, Labor, Pensions, Small Business, and Entrepreneurship. He's on four different committees as a senator. Yeah. I'm not trying to say this like a dumb time. But so since there's standing committees, are there also like committees that aren't um, as active or something? Permanent. Yeah, so you have temporary committees that we'll talk about. Yeah. Uh, but these are like these are standing. They're always there. Okay. So when these members get chosen for each committee, they'll stay on those committees. Unless, or unless they get kicked off like Tim Buell's camp. I gave that example yesterday, okay? Uh, Roger Marshall's on several committees you can see here, okay? I heard Roger Marshall on the radio this morning. I was listening to Fox Business News this morning and uh, heard Roger Marshall interviewed about Mitch McConnell and whether they should go ahead and have the, um, the election uh, now, before the Georgia, because remember, Georgia hasn't been decided yet. They're having a runoff there. Okay, We know the Democrats are going to control the Senate, so they could go ahead and have the vote, but if Herschel Walker wins, shouldn't he have a say in the leadership and that sort of thing as well? Okay. Okay, now, so you got standing committees, right? And as I mentioned, guys, 10,000 pieces of legislation are introduced every two years, roughly. Okay. So um, this is how, this is where these bills go. Somebody introduces a bill into Congress, it's sent to a committee. All right, guys, one of the things on this test we're going to have to learn that you're going to need to understand, so focus, okay, is how this committee system works. Now, the House and the Senate are closely divided. Yes? Looks like the Senate's going to be 51-49 or 50-50 again. The House is going to be 218 to 217, or 219 to 216, something like that. Uh, my numbers are off. But it's going to be very close. So how many Republicans and how many Democrats are in each of these committees? All right, so in the House, if the Republicans do have a majority, and say there are 11 members, let's just go with 11. <coughs> there will be six Republicans and five Democrats on that committee. In the Senate, say we go with 11, there will be six Democrats and five Republicans on it. In the chair, the chairperson of each of these committees, guys, will be of the majority party. Okay? So that one extra they have be the chair. This person controls everything. The chair of the committee controls the calendar. Okay. And if, the, if a bill is introduced into Congress and it is sent to a committee and the chair doesn't like that legislation, they don't like that bill, that bill never gets put on the calendar it is never seen from or heard of again. It dies. Yes. There's a political science term for this. When a bill goes to committee and is never put on a calendar, it's called pigeonhole. You ever heard anybody use that word before? Somebody being pigeonholed? Okay. That's what happens to the bill. It goes... 
Here's the bill. Let's give it to the chair of the committee. Put it on his desk. And it stays there. It dies. It never gets put on the calendar to be brought up for hearings in the committee. If it gets put on the calendar, then it moves forward in the process. With me? I'll go back over this again when we go through how a bill becomes a law. But this is an important step. These committees are huge. Okay? They do all the work. They have hearings. Markup. So this is where the real work of the of the Congress is done is in committees. Okay. Let me give you an example that's personal to me. Okay. So guys, when COVID hit, we shut down the school, right? You guys all went home. You were sophomores. You guys were freshmen. Okay. So we want to come back to school for your sophomore year, right? You guys remember the hybrid schedule? <laughs> Okay, now, Mrs. Eaton, our superintendent, called Vanessa and said, Vanessa, we need to put together a committee so that we can figure out how to best get our kids back to school in a safe environment. So obviously we wanted to have smaller class sizes so we could spread people out, right? And so I was chosen to be on that committee with other teachers, other administrators, and we worked this all out and we figured out, okay, well, we could have the kids come four days a week for half a day. We could just have them come two full days a week. And the other half comes two full days. And we'll use Wednesday as planned days for teachers. Ooh, that was sweet. Dude, we had Wednesdays off. Remember that? God, for teachers, man. It was glorious. I mean, we had to show up for school. We, had, we were here all day. Yeah, but I mean, we went to lunch. Yeah, but we worked. I mean, like, seriously, like, we worked. Uh, and we worked together. Like, we collaborated, which we don't have any time to do. Now, like, we got late start tomorrow. Okay, that was all put, CSI was put together so that departments could get together and work together. Like, I could get with my social studies department and we could work together. And we may even join up with the, the English department to work on some things. We get like two of those a year. That's our collaboration. It's a joke. So we're going to be doing visible, visible learning. You know, visible learning. Yeah. I'll let you know how that goes on Thursday. Okay. All right. Life in the education world. But these committees are important. So we studied, we talked about it, we debated things, and so forth. And we went on four times, because I was like, man, I'd rather have my kids at school four days a week than just two days a week. Did you guys think that was all right? I love it. I, yeah, I like that was, it. that was, that was. <laughs> no, seriously, like, I, because both of my kids were at Carroll. Um, I was like, I want them to come, I want them to come four days a week. You know, it's a half a day. And that's where I got really good at this. Recording my lectures and posting them. Okay, and we got Canvas, right? So, okay. All right, moving forward here a little bit on these committees, all right? So we're going to talk about some other types of committees. We'll come back to standing committees uh, uh, another time, okay? Uh, oh, so, like, um, before you're going to have uh, a vote on whether you like this bill or not, you're going to bring in experts to discuss it, okay? So say the bill's on the civil war in Yemen and whether we should help fund Saudi Arabia. Democrats are gonna bring in their witnesses, Republicans are gonna bring in their witnesses and they're gonna ask questions. It's called a hearing, okay? Markup is where they like change the wording of the bill to get it right. It's where you have lawyers involved, okay? To get the language right, okay? Dot all your T's, cross, you know, dot all your I's, cross all your T's. All that sort of thing. Okay, the, the, this is where the real debate takes place. If you try to debate something like this with 435 people, it's not going to work. Okay, that's why we use the committee system. Okay, that's like if we tried to figure out the plan for COVID, bringing you guys back 
with all the teachers and all the administrators in the room, we would never get anywhere. Okay? Because Loveless would be in there. I'm kidding. Okay. Box. Right. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, so, um, next type of committee. Okay, so underneath these standing committees called subcommittees. There's about 175 of these. Yeah. Okay, so if you're a member of the Senate, you're going to have to serve on several subcommittees. Okay. In the House, you may have to serve on a couple of subcommittees. And guys, this is the nitty gritty. Okay, so let's talk about the Agriculture Committee. Okay, which, you know, we're kind of familiar with agriculture in this state. There are four subcommittees of the Agriculture Committee. One that deals with imports and exports, trade of agriculture. One that deals with things like uh, free and reduced lunches through the Department of Agriculture for school lunches and breakfast for kids. You've got a subcommittee that deals with uh, things like insecticides and pesticides that we use in our farming, right? So you have all these different subcommittees that break out of these standing committees. Okay, now guys, if you go to K-State, get a degree in horticulture, okay, and you need a job, Guys, you can get a job working for the subcommittee on agriculture and be an expert and advise members of Congress about what is good legislation and what is bad legislation. So these committees actually hire experts, staff, to work for them, to help them. Because, guys, some of these members of Congress have never freaking lifted a pitchfork before and don't know the first thing about farming. You know what I mean? What does Dr. Roger Marshall know about farming? He lives in the first district. But does he farm? No, he's a doctor. You need some people in there that know what they're talking about, right? So now, if you serve on the subcommittee in agriculture for 20 years, these members start to become experts. You know what I mean? That's their job, okay? So this system actually works pretty good, okay? We don't always get the intended results that we want. I mean, we're not perfect, know that, okay? So all standing committees have subcommittees and members are expected to serve on several of those, okay? Then, kind of to your point, we also have what are called select committees, okay? Select committees are temporary, set up for a specific purpose. Temporary that are set up for a specific purpose. Let me give you some examples. You guys have all heard of Watergate. Richard Nixon, okay? They set up a special select committee on Watergate to study what happened. 9-11. We got attacked. How did that happen? How did we not see that coming? How did we not stop those hijackers from getting into the country and learning how to fly planes in our country before they carried out the attack? That is a select committee. Okay. Now, this is the first select committee in history to meet during prime time, 7 p.m., and televise their committee here. It's a show, okay? Nancy Pelosi broke a lot of rules on how that committee was set up. Like, 200 years of precedent on this. She, like, changed the rules. Like, well, the Republicans are supposed to be able to choose which committee members they want. They put on some people in there and Nancy Pelosi didn't like those Republicans on there. So she kicked them off. And she left two Republicans on there that hated Trump. One is Liz Cheney, who no longer has a job. Because she got beat in Wyoming in the primary. Okay, by another Republican. 
Adam Kinzinger, he's retiring because you know he's wasn't going to get reelected. And then one of the Democrats on the committee just got beat as well. Okay. It's kind of like every member of the Senate, almost every member uh, of the Senate that voted for Obamacare. Okay. Most of them are no longer in the Senate. Yeah. Well, Liz Cheney won't be able to. Kinzinger resigned, he's off, and the, the Democrats have got beat. So three of their members are gone. Uh, this members. committee will be over by January 20th, or by January 6th, because Nancy Pelosi will no longer be in charge. January 3rd, actually. Uh, yeah. So they've got a couple months to bash on Trump some more. By the way, Trump is supposed to make some big announcement today. Today's Tuesday, right? Yeah. 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 Okay, I don't know what it's going to be, guys. I mean, the politicking here is really interesting to watch. Um, you have, you know, some big-time Republicans that don't want Trump to run, uh, trying to blame Trump for the midterm losses. Um, you know, um, yeah, so we'll see. Uh, some poll numbers are coming out, you know, like DeSantis versus Trump. In certain states, we're starting to see some poll numbers on that. DeSantis is polling very well versus Trump right now. Okay, but can you trust the polls? The polls were wrong, by the way. Remember when we were looking at the polls? A lot of those were wrong. In the in the wrong in the other direction. Usually they're wrong favoring Democrats. This time they were wrong favoring Republicans. So Republicans thought they had a better chance than they actually did. You no, know, usually it's the other way around, right? Like when Trump won in 2016, the polls were way off. Okay, and that was kind of the Trump effect, is that people didn't want to answer that question. I'm, I'm going to vote for Trump. They didn't want to say it out loud. No, I mean, yeah. So the polls were off, and th those were kind of your secret, your, you know, your secret voters, your poll voters. Uh, lack of a better way of saying it. Okay. All right. So. 9-11 uh, Commission, Watergate, January 6th, these are all select committees, temp temporary, okay? Then you get what are, now, we have had a couple select committees become permanent. Uh, if you look on page 77, uh, it doesn't really say it. On the first one, it does. On the first page, 77, it says, House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence, and then Select Committee on Homeland Security. So those have become permanent select committees. Does that make sense? Okay. Then you have what are called joint committees. Now, guys, these are non-political or a-political or clerical in nature. They're not political. Um, they tend to deal with things like there's a, a joint committee on printing. There's a joint committee on the Library of Congress. This just allows both houses to work together to do clerical things. Okay, They're not real political. Okay. And then I got one more type of committee to talk about. Okay. Conference committee. Okay, these are temporary as well, but are an important pro part of the process of how a bill becomes a law. So, guys, when we go over those 13 steps of how a bill becomes a law, this will be one of the key steps. All right. So let me start with this. We get we get a new house with the Republicans, right? So you get the House of Representatives, and let's say. Uh, Kevin McCarthy, the Speaker of the House, wants to see a targeted tax cut for corporations, or actually just make permanent. Guys, when Trump was president, we cut the corporate income tax in the United States, but there's a sunset on that, so it'll revert back. 
So it went from 28% corporate tax to 20% under Trump. Okay. The idea was here that corporations would stay in the United States because they'd be more profitable if they had to pay less in taxes rather than shipping their jobs overseas. Following the logic there. Okay. So he wants, uh, McCarthy wants to make this permanent. 20% tax to corporations. You with me? Now, Republicans win this vote with 218 votes. Okay? This is part of the process, right? Then you send it over to the Senate. Because remember, guys, anytime they're going to tax you or spend your money, where does that legislation have to start? In the House. Okay? Now, it goes over to the Senate. Chuck Schumer. Oops. Chuck Schumer is still in charge. He is the Senate Majority Leader. Does he want to make this permanent? No. But maybe he wants to work with the new Republican House. Let's just not. Probably not going to happen. But let's say, guys. So he says, okay, how about this? We will go to 26%. Now, we won't go all the way back to 28%. We'll go to 26 Okay? That'll help our businesses a little bit. Okay? And this passes. And, and it gets 51 to 50. Kamala Harris breaks the top. Okay? Now what? We got one that passed the House at 20% tax for corporations, one with 26% tax for corporations. What do you send the president? You can't send him either one. So you got two versions. This is version one. This is version two of the same bill. Okay, you with me? What we can do is get members of the two committees, which would be Ways and Means over here. So Ron Estes would be on that committee. And then your budget committee in the House, where this bill started. And they get together what's called a conference committee. And what is their job to do? Negotiate between the two bills. Okay? Now, if a bill actually makes it this far to a conference committee, it's actually got a pretty good chance of passing. Now, what would be a good compromise between 20 and 26? 23%. Sometimes. Okay. okay. Now, can the conference committee, if they agree, 23%, can they send it to the president? No. No. That's simple. No. It's got to go back to the Senate. It's got to be back, because this is version three. Version three has to pass both houses, the exact same version. Okay. If it passes both houses, it can be sent to the president. That's how a conference committee works. Okay? Do I understand that? I will go over that again. At the end of all this, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to talk to you about, I'm going to take you back to 2009 and show you how the Affordable Care Act or Obamacare was passed through Congress because it's a very interesting set of events that take place, okay, between the two houses and so forth, okay? So that's Commerce Committee. Good? Yeah, Mr. Ebron, that was good. That was good. I, I think I get it. Feel pretty good about these committees? I guess this is foreign to you. I understand. Like, this is stuff you've not ever learned, okay? So I'm trying to explain it, but please ask questions if you have any, okay? Um, and I will go back over a lot of this. We'll come back through. Okay. All right. So the next stuff we're going to talk about. What time we get out? 35. Let's just start this. This is easy stuff. Okay. New header in your notes. We're going to talk about the House of Representatives. Break it down. And then we're going to do the Senate later. Okay. So just your header is House of Representatives.
How many are there? Okay. How long are the terms? And how many how many terms can they serve? As many as they can get reelected. Okay. So all 435 are up every two years, which is what we just witnessed, right? Yes? Yeah. All right. Qualifications. How old do you have to be to run for the United States House of Representatives? 25. Must you be a citizen of the United States? Must you be a natural born citizen of the United States? How long do you have to have been a citizen of the United States? Seven years a citizen. Okay. So Maria Flores, uh, Texas. In a special election about a year ago was the first Mexican board member of the House. Her district got redrawn. She lost. Yeah. Which I kind of liked her. So I was, I was kind of disappointed that she lost, but she put up a good fight. Okay. Um, one more qualification. You must live where? You must live in the boundaries of your district. You must have a residence. Now, some of these members of the House spend entirely too much time in Washington, D.C and not in their home districts, if you know what I mean. Some are better than others. About, you know, coming home, spending time with their constituents, getting the pulse of what's going on in their district, okay? All right. Keep going, okay, now. The first Congress, okay, had 65 members. So we have 435 now, right? They had 65 members. Now we only had 13 states, right? Each one represented roughly 60,000 people. So if you want to know the population of the United States, 1790, I can do that for you. I can multiply 60,000 times 65, 3.9 million. Okay, the slaves count. Three fifths. Okay, that was factored in here. Okay, now, as we move forward to 1910, okay, we raised the number to 435 in 1910. And each member represented roughly 205,000 people. Want to know how many Americans there were in 1910? Let me tell you. I'm going to multiply 200, that should be 209,000, excuse me, times 435. Get roughly 91 million Americans in 1910. 
Okay. So you take your 435 seats, spread them out by population across the 50 states, right? So 20, 20. How many Americans are there? 30 million. So I'm going to divide 330 million. O, O, O. Divided by 435, and I get 758,000. So, when we draw Four districts in Kansas. Each one of those districts has roughly 758,000 people. Everybody following me? Yeah. It should be because we've been doing this, you know, with the election. Okay. All right. So, with that, what if your state doesn't have 758,000 people in? Still get one. Yeah. Wyoming. Alaska. Wyoming's the smallest populated. Was. I'd, I'd have to look. Um, but all those with three, they certainly don't have 1.5 million, right? So if you had 1.5 million people in your state, you would get two. Okay? But even if you have less than 758,000, you still get one. Guaranteed one. Okay. That's why DC gets three. That's how many they would have if they were a state. Two senators, one representative, right? Okay. Did senators vote in DC? Sorry? Did uh, senators vote in DC election? Uh, no, their residence is in their home state. It has to be. Yeah. Otherwise, they can't serve. Okay. All right. Now, process of drawing these districts happens every 10 years. After the what? Okay, every 10 years, guys, in the Constitution, you have to do a census. This was our first one, 1790. Okay? We've had every 10 years, we've had a census. Okay? So, the, the election we just had was with redrawn districts. This map is different than we the map we had two years ago. Everybody understands that. Now, the question is, who gets to draw these lines? The state legislatures in most states draw these lines. So, who controls the state legislature in Kansas? Republicans or Democrats? Now, California, New York, sometimes you get the courts involved, okay? This is called, the process is called gerrymandering, okay? And tomorrow, I will begin class with how gerrymandering works. Good? I thought that went uh, well.